GP for me, I say by the way, educated with a K. Ayy. Right, right. Ayy. Okay. Welcome to the jungle. And this is the place. Place. No man, woman, topic is safe. See, when it's fake, I just give them some space. Yeah. Move and shake at my own pace. Race to the finish line, it's a marathon. So I'm gon' finish mine. When the time get in line, boy, we finish shine. I cannot talk to y'all unless I wear Bruce Cumber. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta take your hat off, bro. I won't talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't talk no way. He's oh, up. Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, okay. That's what we need. Oh, that's cool. We good. We good. Yeah. yeah. I actually needed this hat. Hey, go John Cleveland jersey. All right, go. Okay, I don't want it. No more. <laughs> there we go. Appreciate the gift. There we go, right here. That's what's up. Appreciate the gift. Got us all fresh. Thank you. So, so we've so gotten it. So, no, first, I, I, I want to say, uh, Took it off. F you really loud because you beat us in the T League in the championship game and was talking bad to us. Well, yeah, first of all, <laughs> uh, I told y'all, I told everybody in there, you know what, I'm going to get my own team. I'm going to win it. Ain't nobody going to do nothing about it. Hey, well, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, because I've heard stories. Let me hear, give my version of the story. I heard you and JD was on the same team, right? <laughs> I heard y'all lost. Y'all had this super team and y'all lost in like the championship maybe or something like that. Yeah, what it was, this is what it was. <laughs> we was playing with Kenny. We've been playing with Kenny um, since we was childhood. Uh -huh. And you know, so Kenny kept adding people to the team and we didn't need to add nobody. You know, because the only reason why I had people to the team because in the summertime, people be traveling, this and that. And people go out of town and say, Kenny, we fine. We don't need to add nobody. So we had like two or three players and the, the chemistry was messed up. And so, you know, people getting older. JD only got one leg now. He killed you. And listen to me. This is what, when, he, when he was playing with, oh, with us. So we ended up losing. And I said, you know what? I'm not playing with y'all no more. I don't care if you're my best friend, my dog. <laughs> my, you know, I'm not playing with you. I, I'm, going out. I'm not playing with none of y'all. They were like, what? I'm getting my own team. So I decided to get my own team. I said, I promise you, I'm going to win the league. Hands down, I'm going to win the league. I bet somebody 500. I bet somebody 1,500. And I bet another 500. You know? That I won, so that's what happened. And I told him, uh, ain't nobody gonna do nothing about it. And they so, ain't do nothing about it. No, we're coming next season. Um, I actually told JD them this, and, and I, I want to know your uh, perception. Then we're gonna really get into some, 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 you in the jungle, so we're gonna ask some, some really tough questions. But I told JD that we've been on each other since what, like 10, 12? No, I was about seven, because me and JD played baseball together. And Royce and William been friends since Mini Bears. Yeah. So, so, so we all been in each other's life. Well, so <clears throat> when we was like 21, 22, 23, you was in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And you would come home and we would play in the summertime. But I thought all of us was weak because we should have been winning tournaments all day. Yeah. And we, we allowed other people to come in. And, and like you said, Kenny, like I, I, I ain't got nothing against Kenny. But at the end of the day, we didn't need Kenny. It could have been me, you, Boss, Jermaine, uh, 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 L, uh, everybody that we played with growing up, and we could have just ran it, even though we did, like, for 10, like, I always tell people this all the time, man, people get mad at me, and they call me a hater or whatever, but I'd be like, y'all didn't do what Dre did. Dre, since we was 18, we ran the city for about 15 years. Strong. The 9-0 posse was around, wasn't it? It didn't matter. They wouldn't beat us. You know. You know. L and O. L and O, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so. When I, what I'm saying is, and when Dre came home from the Pacers, and it's weird because I feel like a lot of people in the city hate on Dre. And, and, and I don't understand it because you hate on people who don't show you love. Dre came back. He, oh, he had an open gym. Didn't make none of us pay. We all came in there. Everybody who was good, who was playing overseas, playing college ball, we all went to the open gym. And he bought the Pacers there. He bought all the pros there. He gave us the opportunity to play against the best. Every summer we got better and better and better. And all they do is hate on dude. How does that even happen? Because I talk bad to him. But you're supposed to talk bad to him. <laughs> you know, people don't like that. You know, we're we growing up in a world, a society nowadays where everything is social media and everybody's getting more sensitive. You know, back then, that's how it was. I was probably the only one who wouldn't be scared to talk back to somebody and get up in their face and tell them you can't guard them. You ain't gonna do nothing about it. Don't get your daddy. You ain't gonna do nothing <laughs> That's tough. I remember, I remember one time we was hooping. And uh, it was me, Ron Artest, and a couple other people. And we was going back and forth. And Dre had a team. And Dre was killing. So Artest was on Dre. 
And we're shading Dre like, okay, we need to shade. He stops at the half court and looks at everybody and says, when did Ron Artest start needing double teams? <laughs> <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> so I just was cracking up. But since, when's the last time you played basketball, like professionally? A year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. Almost, every, yeah, almost two years. Everybody thought you was done. You tried to get coaching jobs. Yeah, everybody thought I was done. You know, I started my business, and I had an opportunity to go play, but I was making more money, you know, with my business, so I was like, I'm done. My mother was sick. She was like, you need to be in the NBA. You know, I said, Mom, they want the you. I'm watching, my mind said, I watch them on TV, they're terrible. <laughs> I see when you play, you know, but my mother don't understand the politics of the NBA, this and that, so. I had to tell her, you gotta understand, she's like, I don't care what you're talking about. I don't care, you need to be in the NBA, this and that. And so when the big three came around, first my uncle called me, he was like, you gonna get in the big three? I was like, I don't know. My mother said, I'm not coming to you, you my son. You get in that big three. <laughs> <laughs> you get in that big three. So you see, you know what, mom? I ended, up getting a, I ended up getting in the big three, you know. I started training for about two months, two a days. You know, I went out there handling my business, you know what I mean? Everything else is so it's a wrap. So when you got out to Vegas, um, it's typically politics involved in the big three or any anything, right? Yes, it's, it's so, politics and everything. So when you got out there, how did it go? Because it's a lot of big names out there for you to go number two overall. Yeah, well first off, you know, shout out to my dog Rashad McCants. We came in on we came in together on Thursday. We worked out at Joe's. Everybody that played the NBA goes to Joe's in the summertime to work out. They buy a house. They work out there. So when we got out, we went to Joe's to work out. And uh, we were just talking like, man, it'd be crazy. We go in here and kill this thing and go one and two. This is before we knew what was going on. So we worked out and we was competing. So Friday, we had an open session with all this, uh, the coaches and, uh, you know, the, the veteran legends and the, the CEOs is in the building. You know, Roger Mason, Ice Cube, everybody's in there was watching us and me and him competing against each other in drills and people watching us like man these dudes going dumb hard <laughs> i didn't want to lose he didn't want to lose we going dumb hard and shooting drills uh fadeaway shots half court shots we going dumb hard we gambling everything and so when the combine happened on saturday i just he destroyed his group and i just destroyed my group you know my group was uh mike james uh smush parker um, call they out, call their names out. Larry you from Indiana, let them know. Larry Hughes. Uh, Larry Hughes, I understand. Yeah, uh, Steve Francis, uh, uh, Xavier, he was in there. He played for um, the Wizards, and it was the guy that played for the Spurs. He's, uh, he he killed us in an Olympic game. Uh, can't think of his name. He got the blonde hair. Can't think of his name. So that was my group. So the first thing, he was guarding me. You know what I mean? Nothing, I'm not, I'm not, you know, racist or whatever. But I just felt like certain people shouldn't be trying to guard. <laughs> so, so he said he's not racist. But white boys shouldn't be trying to guard. I feel the same way. <laughs> if a white dude's on me, I feel disrespected on the court, and that's not me being racist. I just feel like. So I got some. I got two or three best friends is white, but I just always, <laughs> I always, I always tell them. And I just heard a white girl sing better than most black girls in the city. And I always tell him. <laughs> I always tell him you can't be guarding. Me. You can't be guarding me. Go guard somebody else. You can't be guarding me. It, it's, your genes is to shoot. That's what you, you shoot, that's come tough. off screens, and that's what you do. So when I seen that, I lit up, blew past him. And so the first thing I thought of, I need to make some noise, because everybody's on pins and needles, because everybody's trying to get a job. So everybody's on pins and needles. So I said, I got to get the barking at these boys. That's how I was brought up. So I got the barking at Get off the court. You're a bum. Boom. <laughs> Next person came on. Uh, Mike James came on. Destroyed him. <laughs> Next person came on, destroy him. So Larry Hughes comes on and try to get physical. I said, Larry Hughes, you don't want this. So King Martin was like, you gonna talk to first team, all NBA, all star? I said, King, he's lunched me. <laughs> Wait up, this is what I did. Jab, jab, blue passing. Took off, try to bang him, he fouls him. Try to bang him, foul. So you get a bucket if you get fouled. So after that, everybody just stopped what they was doing and came to my end. And I just ran off about seven, eight straight. And it was over. That's tough. Seven, eight straight. And I kept telling them, ain't nothing you're going to do about it. Nobody going to do nothing about it out here. So tell us about this league. Where, when does it, when can we watch these games? Where can we watch these games? Uh, it's going to be on Fox Sports. It's going to be on TV. Okay. And also, uh, 
the game's gonna be on Sunday, so you know, you, can, when, you can watch it on Monday. They're gonna be air on Monday. Okay. Fox Sports, you know, tickets available now. You know, we're gonna be playing in great arenas. But the thing about this uh, this league is, uh, the thing about this league is that it's very competitive. You know, I see Steven Jackson always getting a fight, bro. This league, the only person to stop him was Charles Oakley. What y'all think?